Hey everyone, my name is Joe Robert. And I'm Hannah Ebelane. Thank you for joining us. If you guys haven't seen Hannah's channel, I'm gonna put a link down in the description, but today we are gonna show you three steps to find a money-making print-on-demand niche. <laughs> So if you are just getting into print on demand, focusing on finding a great niche is going to be one of the most important things that you can do with your print on demand store. In a lot of cases, not choosing the right niche can actually lead to failure of your store. In today's video, we hope to simplify this for you and ultimately give you some simple steps to actually find yourself a great niche. To me, a niche is a group of people that share an interest or a hobby or a skill or a job or even sometimes a relationship type of thing like a baseball mom. Once you understand what a niche is, it should be relatively easy for you to think of lots of niches. I'm sure Hannah and I could probably brainstorm dozens if we tried. In a few moments, we're gonna show you three steps where you could actually find your own niche and research it. But first, Hannah, what about an example of a niche that you think could be a great one for print on demand. So I've seen that a lot of more DIY crafts and hobbies are doing really well recently. So I think a really good niche that you could target would be something like quilters or someone who's interested in quilting, sewing. Now, Hannah, maybe we could also give the people an example of like a bad niche. Do you have anything from your experience that you've tried yourself or maybe even just things that you've seen other people do that might be maybe not a great niche to try? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of new sellers making is they try to target a group that is maybe just a little bit too broad. So something like this could be maybe they want to target nature or something like positive thinking. So with something like nature, that's not necessarily a bad idea, but you definitely want to take that in a little bit more of a specific direction and sub niche that a little bit. So if you really did want to capitalize on people who are passionate about nature, you could think about things like maybe campers or hikers, hunters, you have people who are interested in fishing. So all of them are capitalizing on nature and you can use those really naturey aesthetics, but it's tapping into a little bit more of a specific group who is hopefully even more passionate and wanting to buy one of those items. So step one of actually identifying a money-making print-on-demand niche is all about thinking about what could be good. What I mean by that is there's never going to be like a list of the top 20 print-on-demand niches, although maybe you could type that in on Google and find something. My point though is you're going to have to give this some thought now that we've already established what a niche is, meaning it's a hobby or a job or a skill or something that someone feels is an identity for them or something like that. The goal is for you to just brainstorm. What I usually tell people to do is try to choose five of those things that you personally are interested in or things that you feel like you belong to, like a hobby group or even a nationality or something like that. Those could be great niches to try. What I also tell people to do is try to choose like five niches that maybe you're not a member of or just niches that you think could be good ones to try. Hannah, I will ask you, when it comes to choosing niches, do you typically try to pick things that you personally love or have you chosen things in the past that maybe you're not a member of? I think like you said, it's really about having that good balance. So personally, I actually had a lot of initial success in print on demand targeting a niche that I was very personally familiar with. It was something I was interested in. So really anyone, they have something that they have some insider knowledge in, whether that's like you said a career whether that's a hobby whether that's something they're passionate about so that is a really good place to start but sometimes maybe you're not going to have some initial success with that niche or you just kind of run out of things to target and stuff you personally know so then I think it's really good to expand into some other niches and categories that you might not have a personal interest and that's another thing that I often have to reassure people about is a lot of times in print on demand you're gonna have success does 
designing things that maybe you personally would never wear. You wouldn't buy it at the store, but if you can find a very passionate audience in a niche that you don't have interest in, that can be a really profitable area too. I completely agree. I think the word you said was balance. I think sometimes people think that it's like an all or nothing thing where they can only choose niches that they're personally interested in or the opposite where they have to choose things they're not interested in. I think ultimately if you're someone watching this and you have been interested in POD for like the last five months and you haven't done anything and you have made zero progress, it could be best for you to choose something that you are personally interested in because ultimately that might help you to get like the motivation to start and it ultimately will be more fun for you as well. Once you have yourself a good niche idea, obviously trying to figure out if it actually is good or not should be your next step. What I always tell people is there's never really going to be a software that will just rate your niche on a scale of one to 10. And for that reason, what we have to do is use tools or other strategies to validate our niche. In this video today, we're not gonna be really talking about tools, but we're gonna be showing you some free ways that you can validate your niche. What I like to look for is if there is actually other people out there trying to sell print-on-demand products to the niche that I am also trying to do. The reason for that is I believe if I can find other sellers out there, that that is a good indicator that the niche has some potential. A lot of people might think that a popular niche is one to avoid. Again, though, I'm on sort of the opposite camp where I believe that there's really no more good niches that are undiscovered. If the niche is good, there's likely a lot of people trying to sell in it. Hannah, what are your thoughts when it comes to whether or not a niche is popular in your perspective? Is saturation sort of an indicator for you to stay away from a niche or do you view it similar to me? Yeah, so like you mentioned, I totally agree that the saturation and the number of other people trying to compete in a certain niche can be a really great indicator that there is money to be made there. So what I always tell people is a saturated niche doesn't mean that you just have to stay away from it. It just means that you have to figure out how you can stand out from what everybody else is doing. So whether that is trying to target a different kind of product, maybe there's a lot of hoodies being sold in this, but not a lot of people selling this on mugs. Or maybe there's a phrase that is selling really well and a lot of the top designs are just black with maybe white lettering. How can you figure out how to maybe put a different twist on that? So maybe you're gonna make it like a groovy, retro, colorful style with that same phrase. But always seeing what's doing well and then seeing how you can improve improve or change on that is definitely a really good tip for new sellers. I would 100% agree with something you said about products. Obviously, you and I see things, I don't want to say differently, but you know, I'm someone who makes a lot of content about avoiding shirts. You're someone who sells shirts and you know, makes content about selling shirts. But the reason I bring it up is one of the things that I sometimes tell people is if your niche is like really popular with shirts, then maybe try to do something different besides shirts. Kind of like what you said, where instead of doing hoodies, you know, you do mugs or something like that. I believe that just because there's lots of print on demand sellers out there doesn't mean that the niche is any less passionate, right? If you're a nurse, you're going to be really passionate about being a nurse. And just because there's thousands of people selling print on demand products out there for nurses doesn't mean that you are any less passionate. In fact, in my opinion, like I said before, it's actually an indicator that the niche could have some potential. And just to demonstrate this for everyone, I've gone on Google here and I typed in quilting t-shirt. Quilting was one of the examples that Hannah came up with earlier as a potential good niche. And you can clearly see here, there are lots of sellers. I've done the same thing on Amazon. I typed in quilting shirt. We're seeing lots of sellers here as well. Same thing on Etsy. We're going on Etsy, just typing in quilting t-shirt. Theoretically, you could change this too. Instead of just t-shirts, you could type in quilting mug. And ultimately what this is going to do is it's going to show you if there is a foundation there. You can clearly see as I scroll through here, there are lots of of sellers inside of this niche. Hannah, what about you? Is there anything when it comes to researching the potential of a niche that you look for? Yeah, so besides using a paid tool to validate something like this, a free, really good way to just see if there is interest and people are buying a particular niche is to go to a marketplace, like you said, like Etsy or Amazon, and then see if there's not only just listings, but if some of those have reviews and take note of how many reviews there are. Because even if you look something up and there's hundreds 
hundreds of results, if not a single one of those has a review, that's a good indicator that not a lot of people mm. are probably purchasing that. So it might be one to stay away from. That's a really good point. I never really thought of that before, but that, that's really good. One thing that sometimes I hear from people is when they're searching for that or you know, just trying to look for products with reviews, they have like a tough time getting their items that they're looking for to show up. And if that's happening to you, that could ultimately be an indication that your niche might not be that good. You might also just be having a tough time defining it and that's why you're not seeing anything pop up. And that's again why I think it's valuable to do this exercise so that way you can see if there's any potential with your niche. One quick tip that I would give too is sometimes I try to stay away from niches that would only allow me to create a design that has like a silly quote on a shirt or something like that. Maybe the niche is, you know, people who are introverts or something like that. When it comes to making a design for that, all you're really ever going to be able to do is throw silly quotes on a mug or a t-shirt. And to me, that's probably not going to be something that's going to produce a sustainable print on demand store for you. The next step of all of this is finding what I call a digital congregation. Step three is you making sure that your niche is passionate enough to actually gather in some way online, hence the name digital congregation. Now, Hannah, why don't you give us another example of a great niche and I can kind of show everyone how this works. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about how nature is a little bit too broad, but maybe a good sub-niche of that could be something like hunting. The hunting season is kicking off in a lot of places, so that could be a really fun one to try and find if there is some digital congregation for that. Awesome, yeah. I mean, I just came on Facebook here, and I can see that there are literally dozens of Facebook groups. This one here has 161,000 members in it. This one here has 96,000 members in it, and a whole bunch more have a lot of members as well. If I click pages in the Facebook search, again, I'm seeing the same thing. I see a page here called deer hunting with 181,000 followers, one with 25,000 followers, one with 115,000 followers. So to me, there are certainly some digital congregations on Facebook. A digital congregation is basically, like I said before, a place where people are gathering digitally. This means a Facebook group or a Facebook page. You could even go on Pinterest and search for the niche as well. So here I am on Pinterest looking and there's a whole bunch of posts about hunting. You could do the same thing on Instagram or even TikTok or YouTube. Essentially what we're looking for here is a digital congregation, which is a place where people are gathering digitally to talk about the niche or participate in it in some way. So Let's recap. Essentially what we've done here is presented three different steps that you could take to identify a money-making print-on-demand niche. Step one of all of this involved you thinking about this. You have to realize what a niche is, meaning that it's a passion, it's a hobby, a job, or some sort of an identity that someone has. And really step one of discovering a great niche is to have yourself a little brainstorming session to kind of give this some thought, think things through and ultimately make yourself a list. Yeah, so step two is going to be, we're going to see if there are other people that are selling in this particular. So you can go on places like Amazon, Etsy, Google, and just see if there are other listings in the particular niche that you want to target. And like I mentioned, another great way to validate that listings are actually getting sales is see if quite a few of them actually have review. And then step three is if you can find other sellers and listings with reviews, that's a great thing. But step three is also making sure that you can find digital congregations inside of your niche. If you can find that, that will show you that there is enough passion there for people to actually potentially buy one of your items. And again, this is all so that way you can successfully sell print-on-demand products to strangers. Ultimately, a print-on-demand store's success is going to be based on whether or not you chose a good niche. And that's why we made this video. That's why I wanted to have Hannah join me for this. And again, thanks, Hannah. Where can people find you if someone wanted to go look at some of your content? Well, thanks so much for having me. It's always super fun to talk about niche. 
And you guys can find me on my YouTube channel. That's where I'm most active. I post weekly there. And I also do have a weekly newsletter that goes out. And oftentimes I am sharing some fun niches that I'm finding that you guys could tap into. So that's another great free resource for you guys. But yeah, follow me over on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah, I will also put Hannah's details in the pinned comment of this video. So maybe to save you time from searching for her, you could just click the link that I add into the pinned comment. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. We will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.